My Lord, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Will you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start with a roll call, please. Hey, Council President Prince. Here. Council Member Perez. Here. Council Member Van. Here. Council Member Alverson. Here. Council Member Rivera. Here. Council Member O'Halloran. Here. And Council Member McIrvin. Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All present. All right. Thank you, Jason. All right. First up, we have um, a proclamation. We're going to celebrate National Black History Month. All right. Proclamation. Whereas the city of Renton recognizes the significant contributions and achievements made by African Americans throughout history, and whereas National Black History Month is an annual observance honoring the rich cultural heritage, resilience, and diverse contributions of African Americans to the fabric of our nation, and whereas the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALH, has selected African Americans in the arts in 2024 as their 98th annual National Black History Month theme, highlighting the achievements, artistic expressions, and cultural contributions made by African American artists, musicians, writers, dancers, actors, filmmakers, and creators. And whereas the arts have served as a powerful medium for African Americans to express their creativity, share their stories, challenge societal norms, and inspire positive change, leaving an indelible mark on American history in the global arts landscape and whereas African-American artists have enriched our community here in Renton, inspired generations and shattered barriers through their innovative contributions to music, literature, visual arts, theater, dance, film, and other artistic forms. And whereas by recognizing and acknowledging the extraordinary influence of African-Americans on the arts, we honor their legacy and reaffirm our commitment to fostering inclusivity, diversity, and equal opportunities within our city. And whereas the city of Renton in partnership and communication with residents, businesses, and schools is dedicating to building an inclusive, informed city with equitable outcomes for all in support of social, economic, and racial justice. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim February 2024 to be National Black History Month in the City of Renton, and I encourage all residents to join in the celebration, reflection, and exploration of African American influence on the arts. And witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 26th day of February 2024, signed Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Yes, yeah. Council President. Prince. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Prince, seconded by Council Member Alverson, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And tonight to accept uh, the proclamation is our own Council President. Council President, we, it, it's, if you'd like to I, go I, up I, to I, the, I, if you'd like to go to the podium, you're more than I, welcome. Thank but, you so much. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what, in 12 years, I've never been on this side. I feel a little bit weird. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, thank you for this honor. As someone who stands on the shoulders of giants, Black History Month has always been important to me. Because black history is American history. And the thing that history teaches us is that we are always on a constant path towards progress. Renton has been on its own path of progress when it comes to equity and inclusion. My first year in this august body back in 2012, the council uh, included for the first time equity and inclusion in our five-year business plan. The mayor and the council knew then that the demographics of Renton and of South King County were changing. Adding equity to our business plan led us to participating in the Pacific Science Center Forum on Race, where we met the amazing and talented Benita Horn, who I think is here somewhere. <laughs> um, Benita became a consultant for Renton, and with her, the mayor, and the council, Renton blazed a trail, becoming the first South King County city to ban the box on employment applications uh, creating our equity lens 
and doing extensive equity training with our departments. In 2015, when I was council president, the council for the first time took implicit bias and uh, race, uh, racial equity training. Mayor Law created the racial uh, the Mayor's Inclusion Task Force, which was tasked from hearing hearing from members who hadn't often had the ear of city leaders. African American pastors started meeting regularly with the mayor and police leadership. Is our journey over? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, and I expect that our equity commission will bring many things to us. Um, and when it comes to being more inclusive and equitable, there is no end point. There are just other paths to take on the journey. So I just wanted to remind all of us and everyone here as we continue our path towards progress, where we've been as a city and how far we've come. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Mayor, to say a few words. And uh, I'm going to go back to the seat that I'm more comfortable sitting. <laughs> Stay down there. We have to have a picture of it first. Thank you. It's not a proclamation until there's the commemorative photograph. See all you the one, two, and three. One of those be sharp. Thank you. Thank you. No, we got eyes on us. Okay, so for those of us who joined us um, in the celebration earlier, um, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, if you'd like to leave, we would understand also. So, <laughs> but we're going to go on and, and get on with the rest of the city business here. So next up is the um, administrative report. All right. Good evening, everyone. Due to WashDOT storing materials under the I-405 bridge for its freeway widening project, access to the Cedar River Dog Park at 1500 Hauser Way South will be from Cedar River Park using the pedestrian bridge to cross over the Cedar River. This new access begins Monday, February 26, and will last one year. For everyone's safety, please follow directions given by traffic flaggers and on all posted signs. More information can be found on WashDOT's website at I-405 Widening and Express Toll Lanes Project, or you can email wash.coordinator at rentonwa.gov. Be prepared for emergencies by attending the Renton Emergency Preparedness Academy, organized by the City's Emergency Management Division. You'll gain valuable skills to address emergencies effectively and help prevent further damage while waiting for help to arrive. Classes featured in the winter session include Cybersecurity 101, Surviving Mass Violence, De-Escalation in the Workplace, Emergency Preparedness 101 and Volcano Hazards 101. All classes will be held at Renton Technical College in room C11. To secure a spot, please register online at rentonwa.gov forward slash register using the keyword emergency. Information about preventative street maintenance, traffic impact projects, and road closures happening this week can be found at rentonwa.gov forward slash traffic. All projects are weather permitting unless otherwise noted. Streets will always remain open. All right. Thank you. And next up, we have audience comment. We do have a few people signed up. Um, and when I call your name, please step up to the podium. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes. Um, when recognized, please state your name, city of residence, um, for the record. All remarks must be addressed to the council as a whole. If a response is requested, please provide your name and address, including email address, to allow us to follow up. And the first uh, person signed up is Matthew Hanbay. A little nervous, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Matt Hanby. I live uh, in Renton at, in the North Renton neighborhood. And I'm here today to try and cover in three minutes my concerns about a proposed project, the Logan 6 development. Hopefully you've received some emails, letters, whatnot. Um, and there are others who will speak tonight. Just as a um, background, the, um, the first time this came up was two years ago in a virtual public hearing during COVID. I think there were maybe 10 people involved. And since then, it's been a little hard to try to get everyone aware of the project. In fact, we were out just this last weekend knocking on doors and still a lot of the neighbors don't exactly know about the project. So um, 
the um, the project has been on hold twice in September 2022, September 2023. Um, it's it's been off hold. I think the letters we may have sent to you said the project was on hold. Well, it was taken off hold, I believe, on the seventh. Um, so I'm really here to basically say help, <laughs> help help us navigate through this project. And the three issues that I have are that right now the project doesn't have access on Logan Avenue. Um, we're concerned about the parking and the effects on the neighborhood. Um, traffic is a big concern. And then we're wondering about design standards um, that, that one might argue should, should be in, in place. So in a nutshell, the project as designed will have entrances and exits on North 3rd and North 4th. Those are one-way streets. So Logan isn't involved. And to me, it's a little bit counterproductive um, because in my estimation, the Logan Corridor is based, has higher development because of Logan Avenue, right? So not, to not have it, to not ha for the development not to have access on that street doesn't seem fair And that the, the Renton Senior Center has access on Logan. The, the Boeing parking lot one block north has access on Logan. Top Golf has access on Logan. Now, why doesn't this development have access on Logan? Um, another issue is parking. Um, I, I'm told that it's one space per unit. There's, there's um, 100 units. They're not all just one. Um, a part, uh, room, there's two or three. And so common sense says to me, people are gonna be parking in the neighborhood, the neighborhood adjacent to this development. So they can't park on Logan, they can't par park on 4th, they can't park on 3rd, so they're gonna be parking on Burnett and, and streets in our neighborhood. So that's another concern. Um, I, I've looked, I did some research, it's, it's been two years, so I've had a little time on my hands. Um, the city center plan um, references um, uh, some policy statements about protecting the edges of single family areas. So this is a, the edge of a single family area and we're hoping that there is some uh, acknowledgement of that and perhaps something that can be done to mitigate the, the size of the building, the access points, the traffic and the parking. Um, another, another document, um, this is really old, this is about 35 years old, but it's a city council resolution. So, so, so when uh, there was another August body here, they made statements about how important to the city, um, one of the highest priorities is preserving family neighborhoods in Renton, including the North Renton area. Um, I hear my voice trembling here. So also- Matt, I need you to, to wrap yeah, up your okay. comments. Thank you. The other issue is just the North um, North 3rd Street. The resolution asked to, to minimize impacts to the, the residential neighborhood and North 3rd. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And and Matt, as you know, I was at, the, at your uh, neighborhood meeting last week um and i haven't had a chance to talk to staff but we will definitely make sure that staff is in contact with yourself and the others in the neighborhood um and and keep you informed um about what the process is that we're going through so thank you very much we may be back so you yeah. may see us again <laughs> understand okay next up is emmanuel bailey Good evening, council members. My name is Bailey, um, recent graduate of Renton High School, um, but has moved recently from Renton to Seattle due to um, high rent increases in the area. Um, but today I'm coming to you about the recent election um, and the certification of the passage of Initiative Measure 2302. This is legislation that matches legislation that has been passed in the cities of SeaTac and Tequila, and we um, are excited and honored by the recent, by the decisive vote of the people to match our regional partners in South King County in order to keep our city competitive in the labor market. Um, our biggest questions now as we hand over the hard work of keeping our city competitive and keeping our workers paid to the city council is that we want to make sure that we develop a strong co-governance relationship between the city of Renton and labor stakeholders stakeholders in passing this legislation and creating the codes which will be presented to the business community and, and workers in Renton. So I come to all of you with some questions. Um, I come to you as a, re a former resident and a stakeholder in labor. We want to know what the city of Renton's plan is to provide a plan for workers, small businesses, and labor stakeholders like labor unions um, on co-governance, as I mentioned earlier, regarding the rules and procedures of implementation. 
We want to know the timeline for when the city is going to provide the codes regarding 2302 to small businesses who will be um, who will need to prepare um, for the gradual increase. There's a difference. So there is a tiered difference. So we want to make sure that small businesses are aware and protected and workers are aware of their rights. And we want to make sure that the city of Renton is open in their strategy in implementing this legislation. And we want to know if the city of Renton is planning on talking with other regional partners like Tequila and SeaTac and regional partners in our labor and workforce like I am, um, the um, aerospace machinists, um, and the MLK Labor Council um, to see how city staff and labor staff have collaborated and taken steps to integrate and enforce the similar legislation. And I want to end this off by thanking this council for being a very important touch point for this um, legislation. We have heard so many perspectives and we have so much to gain from working as a city and working and in collaboration with each other. And I want to thank you all for your public service and your continued continued commitment to the workers of Renton. And I look forward to building a new relationship as partners. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Ellie Robershaw. Ellie? No Ellie? Okay, Ellie's not here. How about Paul Quinn? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Paul Quinn and I live in Sammamish and I'm an individual that cares about recycling and composting and reducing what we send to the landfill. I've learned about Renton through public record requests. Let's start with an important fact from McKean County survey of trash sent to the landfill, which showed that two thirds of what is sent to the landfill can be either recycled or composted. So two thirds of our trash is actually not trash. Tonight, I'm gonna to walk you through the first of the three handouts that I provided. I'm gonna walk you through this one. The first table reflects the tonnage disposed of by categories for 2022 and 2023. The second table shows how the city's tonnage is disposed of. Most notably, 63% of what the city disposes of goes to the landfill. That amount is worse versus 2022. It's a good time to note that if 63% is going to the landfill, only 37% of what we dispose in Renton is diverted to recycling or composting. The third table shows the diversion rate for each category. Of note, commercial and multifamily locations divert just 15%. So essentially about 85% of what they dispose of goes to the landfill, 85%. Table four reflects the missed opportunity that I noted at the start of my talk. Since two out of three pounds we put in the landfill could be recycled or composted, then last year Renton could have diverted an additional 30,000 tons to recycling or composting. The next section reflects the urgency we face as each month Renton sends to the landfill another 2,500 tons. In table five, you see at the bottom, you see the categories listed and the red indicates where the category does not have a food scraps yard waste container. It's striking most of the city's businesses, 1,246, don't have a food scrap yard waste container, but it's more striking that 377 of our 404, or about 93% of our multifamily locations, have no way for their residents to compost their food scraps. Handouts two and three, recommendations for improving our diversion rates, I'll go over another time. The City Council is active in supporting climate change initiatives, as indicated by your Clean Economy Strategy 2.0. Your Clean Economy Strategy document shows that over 80% of your residents support or strongly support initiatives to improve city diversion rates. Your residents want your action. I believe the people of Renton want to live sustainably. They need the tools and they need to receive individual diversion feedback about how they're doing. Like the PSC Energy Report we all receive now, feedback is a catalyst for change. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hey, uh, for clarification, um, Paul, are you from Sammamish or Renton? Sammamish. Sammamish, okay, you'd put Renton down here on the page. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, next up is Guillermo. 
Zuta, Zuta. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Guillermo Sasueta. I'm a resident in Renton. Thank you, Council President, Mayor, City Staff, and City Council for the work that you do here at City Hall. I'm here to talk about the recent February special election and Initiative Measure 2302, Raise a Wage Renton, which did pass with over 58% of the vote. The reason I'm here tonight is to outline some of the upcoming dates and deadlines that pertain to Renton City Council and the Finance Department and what I hope will be a smooth transition to raising the minimum wage for the largest of employers to 2029 an hour by this coming July 1st. There are two important sections of this ordinance to bring to your attention. <laughs> Section 12, titled Rulemaking, states that within 180 days after the effective date, July 1st, the city shall adopt rules and procedures to implement and ensure compliance, meaning that the city will have until January of next year to adopt rules and procedures. Additionally, this section states that the city shall seek feedback from worker organizations and covered employers before finalizing. It is truly my hope that now that this is passed, the city will ensure that implementation is done fairly, transparently, equitably, and supports workers and businesses during this transition. Section 15, titled Election Date, states that the Finance Department must establish and publish the initial minimum wage within 30 days of the effective date, July 1st. The city will now have until June 1st to provide notice to employers and workers. I'm sure you all knew that already, but for purposes of public record, these are the dates to expect these major changes in regards to this initiative. You know, I do think it is also worth mentioning that the No on 2302 Political Action Committee has received a number of contributions totaling $80,000 and expenses totaling $156,000 with just 17 total contributions from the Washington Hospitality Association, the Renton Chamber of Commerce, and others, to name a few. Notably, No on 2302 is also in deep debt, over $90,000. Most importantly here, PDC filings show that there are recorded unpaid pledges amounting to at least $25,000 from the Renton Chamber of Commerce. This raises some very serious concerns about the nature of their activities during this campaign. As you all know, the Renton Chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit organization that receives taxpayer funds from the city of Renton as part of its Lodging Tax Grant Program, or LTAC, that recommends where to distribute taxpayer funds. It is our understanding that LTAC grants over $65,000 a year to the Renton Chamber Alex. for the Visitor Center operations in downtown Renton. I'm almost done. I feel like we're, we're way off topic here. Are you tracking on this? It feels like we're, we're kind of out of territory that is for public discussion. I have just one more blurb. May I finish? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, the city facilities cannot be used for discussion of yeah. ballot measures. Yeah, this is... Thank you so much. I've got one more blurb. Uh, I just feel that it is extremely important for the city council to know that since December, the rent chamber has regularly used the taxpayer funded yeah. downtown rent and visitor center we're, we're to move, conduct we're opposition on. campaign. Thank you, Guillermo. All right. Next up is um, Christina Mann. Howdy, hi, it's me again, your friendly uh, Christina Mann, Tuckwilla resident, uh, friendly neighbor here to say hi. Um, as you all know from a couple of other times I've come here to speak, uh, I was a community organizer on the Raise the Wage Renting campaign. Um, so the team now is talking about like the transitional period, uh, how we want to go about having our relationship with the city and local labor unions and how we want to have nice open-ended you know open discussions you know town halls other community get-togethers and how we want to work with the city in order to do that um so that's kind of why we're here today just to have a public comment just to let y'all know like hi we're still here um even though the election is over and we're still excited to continue building bridges with the city and a part of that i feel as my viewpoint as a Tuck Willow resident and talk uh, and kind of holding y'all's hands, I guess, because uh, we also went through a minimum wage ballot. We also went through 
uh, the implementation process. So there's already really good resources and places to look at in Tukwila. And in Tukwila's strength and togetherness that is rooted in our diversity as a community, um, Tukwila is interesting because it's the home office of a lot of like local unions that have been involved in our minimum wage implementation process. So that's already somewhere that I, uh, as someone who, you know, comes to y'all's farmers markets and shops in y'all's downtown, because I live right on the border of Tukwila and Renton, uh, I feel like a, a, a Tukenton, you know, resident sometimes, which is why I was a part of this uh, initiative process. Um, I think unions would be a great place to start. I think having an open conversation with us organizers and us community members who came together and brought this ballot initiative uh, forward and helped it pass uh, and workers in the community. I think it's important that we all come together and walk hand in hand regionally, you know, um, as well as fellow cities in South King County are going to be either passing their own minimum wage initiatives um, outright or they're going they're possibly going to be more ballot initiatives across the county um so i think it's important for tuckwilla and renton now to be leaders in the region going forward and working together and showing how to really get this done i think it's important that we be partnering with our community who's rallied together to help all of this happen and i think it's important to reassure the voices of the voters to let them know, yes, we heard you. Yes, this implementation process is going to go smoothly. Uh, yes, we already hear your concerns. So I, you know, as a community organizer and uh, us here today who have been speaking, oh, I got 10 seconds. We're excited to work with you. You know, we're excited for the next part of this process of the implementation. Is that the timer? It's red. All right, let's go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next up is Michael Westgarden. Council President stepped out. Um, good evening. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, so I'm here also to talk about 2302. And first, I want to start just publicly to say thank you to the chairman, Guillermo Zavetes, who ran a great campaign and built a hell of a coalition. The nine electeds that all publicly endorsed and supported. The six small businesses located in Renton that all came out in support and posted signs. The 14 unions, including MLK Labor, is the forefront. And the 8,144 written voters who all voted yes. Thank you very much to them. But yes, next uh, is the next part of the campaign. So we are here to participate and contribute with the knowledge that we have learned, the connections we have made, and making sure that this is a smooth process. So, like Glarmo said, we have some important dates coming up. 30 days before implementation. There needs to be no dissent to all the small businesses, medium businesses, and large businesses on where they stand. And then after 180 days of implementation, there needs to be some RCWs that have been written. And this is in crit critical important work that if we could do sooner than later, it will make the implementation process a lot easier for the businesses that we care about in Renton. Because it is a lot easier to start with an understanding and an implementation process that is very clear than trying to clear it up six months later and then being open to possible lawsuits because you have bad practices and other issues that can come up from such things. So I look forward to doing that and am here as a member of the community that has been working in the community on this campaign day and night and meeting people and talking to people to offer our resources and our support in any way we can to help this process go as smoothly as possible and make sure that everybody knows the way it is being implemented, the way the law is written, and where everybody stands, because it is important that it is done properly. I appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is Mark Arnold. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mark Arnold, a lifelong Renton resident. And I'd like to thank the mayor and the council for the funding of the recent repair work done at the uh, Liberty Park Skateboard Park. Uh, 
The beloved skateboard park needs updating. A uh, possible replacement. After 24 years of use, the current repairs will only last so long. So future planning is key. The rent and skate community and park has a rich history. Three generations of my family currently uses this park. My daughter, my grandson, and my granddaughter, who are all here. Thank you for showing up. Um, we're, my daughter was 11 years old when the skateboard park was completed. They are now parents with children who use it. How cool is that? Community skate parks are places to unite, be different, to become part of, the, of a community. To try new challenges and make lifelong friends. Skate parks also provide endless opportunities to learn important skills like decision making techniques that start from the moment they step into the park. They learn how to fall down, get up, dust themselves off, and try again and again till success is achieved. Open skate parks provide hundreds of kids a safe place to play where there might not be one. Skateboarding has provided me a lifetime of blowing off steam, healthy distractions during hard times, and something to challenge myself and grow. My first involvement with the City of Renton and skateboarding was a half-pipe demonstration at the Bicentennial Celebration in 1976. I've spent decades supporting Renton skateboarders and skateboard parks in Renton. The need for a new covered skateboard park was so great that the individuals here built Long Acres DIY with great success. They built it by hand with their own money and blood, sweat, and tears. Over the past two decades, the City and Parks Department promised new skate parks in Renton. Many people were involved in creating the Long Range 10-Year Parks Plan and Tri-Park Master Plan. Another decade has passed without a new skateboard park. The City officials and the Parks Department who promised these parks are now retired. I believe the City of Renton should take the lead and build and promote more skate parks in our city. Let's build places for youth to challenge themselves, to learn key decision-making skills, create new friendships, and a healthy, safe activities for a lifetime. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. What can the mayor and council do to remedy things past council and parks department heads promised us? Extensive long-range plans that forgot to build skate parks after being implemented. Please help us design and build more skate parks in Renton for our youth. Thank you to everyone for showing up tonight, and thank you for the council for listening. All right, thank you. And we will definitely um, be communicating with you. So, yeah. The next up is uh, Jack Skeel. Hello, everyone. Good evening, council. My name is Jack Skeel, and I live on the West Hill of Renton. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about the future of skate parks within the Renton Parks Department and more specifically Long Acres DIY under 405. As Mark explained before, Renton is long overdue for a new park. The skaters of the area appreciate the maintenance and upkeep of the existing Liberty Park, but preventative maintenance does not address the lack of a skate space in the city <clears throat> and the dire need for more of it. Let's get into some facts from the Tony Hawk Foundation. Your average city needs 10,000 square feet of skate space for every 25,000 residents. Renton has 105,000 people currently, but only 8,400 square feet of skate space at the current Liberty Park. According to the math, the city of Renton's size needs an additional 34,000 square feet of skate space. Your average skate park is between 6 and 10,000 square feet. So in theory, that's three more skate parks. Now, I'm not up here asking you to build three more skate parks in the city of Renton, but I am asking for a collaboration within the city, the state, and Unico Properties on a skate space that has already been enjoyed and used by thousands of people over the last eight years. Yes, I'm talking about that little skate park under the bridge. I've personally spoken with Ned, Car Ned Car Carner, the chief investment officer from Unico Properties. He was very enthusiastic about wanting to see the skate park under the bridge stay alive. To go along with the massive redevelopment of the old Boeing Longacre site, Ned wants to add new activities and ways to recreate around the urban community center that will soon be built there. He is interested in having a mountain bike trails, a dog park, a pump track, and specifically a skate park to be part of that new community. Ned is more than willing to have his company be a financial sponsor of the skate park. He is willing to pay the $13,000 a year 
in rent and insurance to keep the skate park on the premises because it's a benefit to the community vision he has in store. Now, I know the city has always been shy to take hold of Long Acres because it isn't actually on your property. Other fees, legalities, and approvals would need to be had in order for Renton to have a city park in that space. But the thing is, that's already been approved. I have an airspace lease from WASDOT for 6,800 square feet of space underneath I-405 to be used as a skate park. An approved lease to skate what already exists and build larger skate park if the tenant so chooses. I have a real estate developer who's willing to sponsor the park so you don't have to find money in the city budget. I have contacts at WASDOT you can call who would be much happier to lease the land to you as opposed to Jack Skeel, the plumber from Skyway. <laughs> I don't believe it should be the responsibility of a single individual to be responsible for leasing land and providing covered skate space to the citizens of Renton and the surrounding area. It's the city's duty to provide for its residents, to understand the needs of its people, and act on them. Covered skate space has been a need for all of Western Washington for a long, long time. And Renton has an opportunity to provide something that's very unique in King County and something that doesn't currently exist anywhere else. I would love to see that thrive here in your city. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next uh, speaker is Cheryl Fries. Uh, Welton Avenue, and also the president of the North Renton Neighborhood Association. So I'm actually here in a dual capacity. I wanted to say thank you. Um, I also want to address something I think really important, and it may be in some mixed messages that we've been giving in regards to Logan Six, is we are not opposed to growth and opportunities for Renton as a city. What we are asking though, is that the growth be thoughtful, strategic, and regularly evaluated, which we don't think has been the current situation and why you are hearing North Renton neighborhood take such an active um, viewpoint and stance on this. What we'd also really like to see is retrospectives when developments are completed and that those retrospectives are public, meaning that the surrounding area gets called in for a meeting. What were some of the lessons learned? What can be proactively addressed and or implemented for upcoming developments? Uh, Sartori is a great example of that. Logan and Sartori are straddling the North Renton neighborhood, and those of us in between are having two bookends that are absolutely impacting the quality of our neighborhood. And a phrase I like to use professionally and personally is set us up for success, please, because we want to welcome people to the neighborhood and not do so from a point of contention. And right now we feel like that's the direction it's going because things are being forced on us without you all hearing our voices. Burnett, Williams and Wells are not equipped to handle another hundred plus, and that's being super generous cars that are going to be associated with the 100 plus units. Um, as Matt was saying earlier, they are one, two, and three bedrooms, and we're making some absolutely uh, critical assumptions here if we're assuming there's only going to be one car per unit. Um, the other thing we want to bring up is that Burnett, Williams, and Wells is not equipped for all the cars and the traffic and all the friends and people visiting Logan Six and where they're going to have to find parking. Um, I have a major issue with Wells. I love my neighbors. I, I love the fact that I've now been here for two years. Um, we are a bus stop street twice per day a.m. and p.m., two buses. We already have cars going the wrong way off of 4th, turning left on Wells, even though it is one way. I've had an open ticket with rent and response, and Mayor, I was incorrect the other day when I spoke to you, it's actually 120 days, and um, trying to get it addressed with larger signs because one day there is going to be an issue with the school buses. I don't wanna see that. I don't wanna know about it. Um, I want to help address it. 
And then two points, my last two are, we feel like there is a direct violation of the intent of the City of Renton Resolution 2708, which talks about the preservation of single family neighborhoods. And also the City Center Community Plan written initially in 2011, updated in 2017, which says to protect and enhance the neighborhoods. So again, we'd love to work together. We'd love to figure this out. We would really like an entrance uh, and exit on Logan, aligning with the rest of the development on Logan. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, next up is um, Gabriel Jones. Hello, Mr. Barron, City Council members. My name is Gabriel Jones. I'm a member of this wonderful city's Equity Commission, but I usually, when I come to speak here, I speak as a Renton resident, because that's what I am first and foremost. Uh, for one, I was very excited to see uh, the passing of 2302, and one, one, one thing I really want to talk about is how important it is to make sure that we are equitable in how we disperse things to businesses. There's going to be multiple businesses we're dispersing to, so we need to make sure we're putting in the forefront um, but, you know, language barriers, people with different languages, how they reach, making sure that everyone knows about this so we can help communities most of all. That was that, that was just very quick. The main thing I wanted to speak about was uh, now down to three initiatives that are currently going through the state that I have massive concerns about. Uh, for one, being paid for is these initiatives are being paid for by one person. Over six million dollars are, are being paid for just that one. Our one person is paying six million dollars. The next closest has three people spending five hundred fifty-five thousand. It is paid for by one person, mm -hmm. and things that will directly harm rent and residents. And it's a big concern of mine. Like one of them is a parental right to know, most of which is overkill. Gabriel, we can't we can't use this time to speak for or against anything political. So it it's actually a state law. So okay, yeah, uh, in, in, he, okay. You had six topics. Um, the six the six topics were the six bills, but other other than that, the other thing I will speak to, I'll speak to something else then. Uh, something else I'll speak to is um, with the death of rental protections in the state. In the state, we need I we need to talk about rental protections in Renton. Rental protections are huge. We have a large majority of our people in Renton are renters, and I want to see multiple things. We can, there are multiple things we can do outside of rent caps. There are things I want to see things like no cold weather evictions, no school year evictions, things where we can help our residents most for the people who are going to be put out in the street, how we can help our residents the most who are going to be affected by these things. So renter protections would be a huge step in making equity and rent in, in the forefront. And I would very like, much like to see what our community can do to help some of the most disadvantaged people. That'll be it. All right. Thank you. Okay. That is everybody. Thank you. Next up is the consent agenda. There are six items for council consideration. Are there any items that would be pulled? Mayor. Yes. I'd like to pull item E. Pull item E. It's Mayor. Yes, council I'd president. I'd like to approve the consent agenda minus item E. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Prince, second by Council Member Alberson, that we approve the consent agenda minus item E. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. Council Member McGurban. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so item E deals with the tra uh, a new operating agreement, transfer and operating agreement for uh, business at the airport. Uh, this is a companion to a P uh, an item we passed two weeks ago concerning the transfer of that lease. Uh, normally these things would run concurrently, but due to the expiration of the previous uh, lease, it came as a separate uh, agenda bill. Uh, thus, rather than sending the same item that we approved the, the companion to uh, two weeks ago, I'd like to move that this item go council concur. Okay. Oh, yeah. She seconded it. Okay. Um, it's been moved by Councilmember McGurvin and seconded by Councilmember Van that item E go council concur. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, we're on to unfinished business. Council President Prince. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Van. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Albertson. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rivera. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember O'Halloran. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. The Finance Committee has six committee reports. Hey, uh, 
Finance Committee Committee Report. The first uh, committee report is regarding approval of claims and payroll vouchers. Now, the Finance Committee approves the following payments. Accounts payable, total payment of $10,054,343.55 for a number of vouchers and payroll benefit withholding vouchers and eight wire transfers. Two is payroll, a total payment of $1,895,376.38 for payroll vouchers that include 664 direct deposits and eight checks. This is the January 16th through 31st pay period. And then municipal court vouchers totaling uh, $44,607.82. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Halloran. I move the council concur with the finance committee report. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez. Did the council concur with the Finance Committee report in discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, the next report is regarding agreements with King County for uh, flood reduction and uh, watershed management grant funds. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute flood reduction grant agreement 42307 with the King County Flood Control District in the amount of $250,000 for engineering services for the Linda Avenue Southwest Storm Improvement Project and to execute the Raya 9 Cooperative Watershed Management Grant Agreement 4923007 -007 with the King County Flood Control District in the amount of $150,000 for the Springbrook Creek Restoration Action Plan. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Halloran. I move the council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. And moved by Councilmember O'Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez. Did the council concur with the Finance Committee report in discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. The next report is regarding a fuel tax grant agreement with the Washington State Transportation Improvement Board for South 7th Street Corridor Improvements. Uh, the Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the fuel tax agreement in the amount of $187,000 with the Washington State Transportation Improvement Board and all subsequent agreements necessary to accomplish the South 7th Street Corridor Improvements Project. This too is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Halloran. I move the council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember O'Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez. Did the council concur with the Finance Committee report in discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. At the next report is regarding a, another fuel tax grant agreement with the Washington State Transportation Improvement Board. This one is for the Southwest 43rd uh, Street Improvements Project. Uh, the Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the fuel tax grant agreement in the amount of $2,975,154 with the Washington State Transportation Improvement Board and all subsequent agreements necessary to accomplish the Southwest 43rd Street Improvements Project. This too is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Halloran. I know you're expecting me to say something, but I'm going to save it till the end. So... In the meantime, I move the council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez. Did the council concur with the uh, Finance Committee report? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, the next report is regarding uh, Parks and Recreation Temporary Event Permit Fee Waiver Request. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the fee waiver requests from Bloodworks Northwest, Renton Limburg Hazen and Liberty High Schools, and Renton Park Run, totaling $10,755 for temporary open space rental fees, use fees, uh, green fees, and application fees for 2024 community events. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Halloran. I move the council concur with the Finance Committee committee report. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember O'Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez. Did the council concur with the Finance Committee report? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the final report from the Finance Committee is regarding a grant acceptance from uh, uh, for rent and middle housing development regulations and an agreement with Makers uh, Architecture. The Finance Committee concurs with the staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with the Department of Commerce to accept $49,445 
uh, not to exceed $50,000 in grant funds to develop a draft middle housing ordinance. The committee further recommends authorization for the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Makers Architecture and Urban Design LLP in the amount of $49,961 for the development and drafting of the middle housing ordinance. This uh, is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Or Halloran. I just want to call uh, the audience's attention to the fact that we just uh, received grants in the amount of almost $3.6 million. And that is an awesome accomplishment by our staff. And we love getting money <laughs> rather than spending money. We'll spend it, of course, on all these projects. But it's nice to have somebody else pay for them from time to time. So staff, anybody who is involved in this, awesome. Just awesome. Thank you so much. Mr. Mayor? I need a motion. I, 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 I move the, yeah. I move the council concur business. with the Finance Committee committee report. Second. Okay. It's, it's been moved by Councilmember O'Halloran, second by Councilmember Perez, that the council concur with the Finance Committee report. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. We are on to Councilmember McGurvin. Uh, no one business, Mr. Mayor. All right, next up is legislation. We have two ordinances for first reading. All right, the first ordinance is regarding the 2024 salary table. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending the 2024 City of Renton salary table to reflect collectively bargained changes, to correct clerical, uh, clerical errors, and to establish an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Halloran. I move the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member O'Halloran, second by Council Member Perez, that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. All right, the next uh, report is regarding, uh, hang on, sorry. The next report is regarding, what is it? Ordinance 6133. 6133, International Building Codes. So an ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending subsection 45050A, subsection 45050C4, section 4551, section 45055, subsections 4560A and B, 4560C3, 4560D13, 4560E, 4560G, 4560H1, 4560J11, 4560K1, and K2, 4560L1, and L3, 4560N, 45601 and 03 and 05 and 08, uh, 4560R2, 4560S, 4590A, section 45100, and section 45110 of the Rent Municipal Code, adopting by reference and amending the most recent versions of the International Building Code, the Washington State Energy Code, the International Residential Code, the Construction Administration Code, the International Mechanical Code, the National Fuel Gas Code and the Uniform Plumbing Code, repealing subsections 45060 I5, I6, and I10, adding new sections 4561, 4562, 4563, 45101, and 45105 to the Rent Municipal Code, adopting the International Existing Building Code, the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, the International Wildland Urban Interface Code, Code, the International Fuel Gas Code, and the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Code, authorizing corrections, providing for severability, and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Press. <laughs> Great job, Jason. So I move that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Okay. It's been moved by Councilmember Press, second by Councilmember Alberson, that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, nay. All right, motion carries. Matt, did we get all of them in there? Okay, good. All right, next up is new business. Uh, Council President Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, March 4th, uh, 2024, the Committee of Whole will be meeting uh, at 5.45 p.m. in the conferencing center. We have one item on the agenda, and that is an economic development update. That's all, Mr. Mayor. 
Eight. Oh, nope, I'm sorry. And then at 7 o'clock, the council meeting will be meeting here in council chambers and by video conference. Now oh, that is all, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Missed that one. All right, council member press. Not any business, Mr. Mayor. Council member Van. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Utilities Committee uh, committee has a meeting on March 4th, 2024, Monday at 4 p.m., and the location is Council Conference Room and via video conference. We have one item on the agenda. That's Amendment Number 1 uh, to CAG 19-294 uh, for Utility Construction Agreement with the Washington State Department of Transportation for legal relocation of the city utilities for the I-405 Renton to Bellevue widening and express toll lanes project. And um, also, Mr. Mayor, I just want to thank our community members for commenting and I want to share with our community that we uh, observed uh, unsung hero celebration at the Renton History Museum and uh, the Lunar New Year Festival over the last two weeks. I know we didn't have council last week, so I wanted to uh, give some kudos to the staff, uh, MJ and uh, Liz, and folks for helping uh, putting it together, as well as Miss Erica Conway and Dan um, Clausen for all the support. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, Councilmember Alberson. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember mm -hmm. Rivera. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember O'Halloran. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember McGurvin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I uh, would like to announce the Transportation Committee will be meeting on Monday, March 4th at 4.45 p.m. in the Council Conference Room and via video conference. Uh, just one item on the agenda, that's compensation and final approval of the Peterson Street vacation. That's all, Mr. Mayor. All right, what is the wish of the council? Move we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Prince, second by Councilmember Perez, that we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. Thank you.